as we, before I read our, our text, you, how many of you have ever taken a nap? Yeah, I hope everybody in this room has. Now, I'm not talking about the one that you took a nap and you slept for an hour and a half and you felt worse after you took your nap than you did when you started. Okay, I'm not talking about that one. But you took a power nap that was 20 minutes, 30 minutes, whatever it was. And uh, in the midst of that, you got up and you were recharged. You were refired for the rest of the day. How many of you had one of those? Okay. Four of you. Okay. Um, the, the truth is, man, those feel good. It's like, it's like I am renewed. I'm ready for... Okay, how about this one? Don't even raise your hand. We all, you are so starving hungry. You were just, your stomach is growling, and you went to the cupboard, or you went to a restaurant or your favorite drive through and you grabbed a bite, and when you got that, gobbled that down, you felt renewed at the end of it. How many have been there? Yeah, you've been there. Okay, you got it. We all have. So I'm trying to get this idea of renewing, that some of it comes in the most simplistic ideas of our like, like life, like taking a nap, or just eating, and uh, so... Let's read our text this morning and let's get into this idea of renewing and what it teaches us. Verses, starting in verse 4 this morning. But when the kindness and the love of God our Savior toward man appeared, not by works of righteousness which we have done, but according to his mercy, he saved us through the washing of regeneration and the renewing of the Holy Spirit, whom he poured out on us abundantly through Jesus Christ our Savior, that having been justified by his grace, we should become heirs according to the hope of eternal life. Father, this morning, I just pray that your Holy Spirit would go beyond the words that I speak and you would just begin to penetrate the heart, the mind, the internal spirit of everyone in this room and those that are listening online today. I pray you'd refresh us and renew us. I know you've already worked in that arena in our hearts and our lives this morning through worship, but God, I pray you'd do it through your word right now. We'd walk out of this room renewed and fresh in our heart today. In your name we pray, amen. Let me just tie some uh, points, some practical, uh, to our text today. The first is this. It's up on your notes. The Holy Spirit will change some D words in your life to some R words. You say, Pastor, what are you talking about? Okay, just give me a second. The Holy Spirit will change some D words to some R words in your life. You say, Pastor, what does that mean? Maybe you can identify with some of these words starting with D. Maybe this week, maybe this last month, or maybe this year. Down. You've been down. Discouraged. Disappointed. Depressed. Disheartened. Dejected, debt, disillusioned, disagreement, denied, dark, doubt. Maybe one of those words resonates with you that you have been dealing with. But our text shows us a different picture, a picture of renewing that is caused by the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit can replace those D words with some even better R words, and here they are, refreshed, restored, recovered, reconciled, replenished, Regenerated, renovated, renewed, reset, revived, rebuilt, repaired, rejuvenated, recharged, recreate, resuscitate. How many of you like the R words better than the D words? 
I, you know, see, I, I believe in this whole idea is that, that that's what he wants to do in our hearts, in our minds, in our spirit. We have uh, Brad, who's not here this morning. He's a profusionist over at the hospital, over at Bellin Hospital. And um, he keeps the heart going during surgeries when they're doing open heart surgeries. He's the one that keeps them going. And, and, um, but this is an AED pack that we keep back in the office in case uh, any of you decide to have a heart attack during church or something, okay? And, uh, and so, um, it, 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 so if we are set. And nobody have a heart attack on me, okay? I don't want to recess anybody and no, recit, 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 resuscitate anybody. And you don't want to do it either. But this thing is an amazing little pack. And if it opens, you open it up, it's got these little paddles in it that will resuscitate you if you're having a heart attack. And so maybe there's some of you uh, in this room or some of you listening online. And there's just been these, these D words that have been so discouraging to you. They, and you say, Pastor, I don't know where to turn. I'm showing you in his word where to turn. Turn to the renewing of the Holy Spirit that he wants to take those D words and turn them into the R words. How many of you are glad that's the kind of Holy Spirit that we serve? That's what our text is teaching us here. It's the washing of regeneration and the renewing of the Holy Spirit that he wants to pour out on us. This word in the Greek, in the original language, is the word ana, uh, anakonosis. And it literally means this, to be new again. To be new again. To make new. To be refreshed. A heart that wasn't working, that you take this resuscitator and you shock it and it's working again. It's, a fra- it's, it's renewed in its working ability. Sue and I were out for a walk last night, and we have a little up around, in just north of our house, there's a little walkway around a new subdivision, and it's two miles long, and so we went for that walk last night, and, and so there's a big section of houses that we walk around, it's a new subdivision, and then there's, across the street on Sunlight Drive, there is um, some houses that have been there 30 plus years, and as we were walking along, Sue just noted to me, she said, you know what, all these houses, they're getting new siding, and they're upgrading their house, and their house is being renewed. And uh, they're, they're being rebuilt and renovated to look new again. I was um, uh, on uh, Pastor Chris and Ashley. Uh, they have just renovated a house that was built in 1865. And uh, they have gone, done, it just took a house that was depleted and, and, and just in difficult situation. And, and I, I looked at their uh, Facebook post, and, they, and she has a website. She kind of does some interior design website stuff called Cherish Bliss. It is a cool website. Some of you want to look at it. And uh, I'm promoting your business, uh, Ashley. And, uh, and so they've renovated it, but they took this old house in downtown Appleton. And they made it new again. That is the essence of this renewing. And here it says the source of it, the power of it, is the Holy Spirit. It's the Holy Spirit. So, second thing I want to talk about this morning is this. This renewing is more than words on a page. I was here praying in this room this week. And I just felt a sense that I needed to make this this simple point. Because you know what? Sometimes we can read God's word as a textbook. But the truth is that he wants to renew some of your life. It's more than words on a page. I'm not just blowing smoke. I'm not just giving you words off a page of a text or print or any. It, he wants to renew your life, refresh your life from the places you've been in your heart that discourage you. They're more than words on a page. It says here, look at the way it happens in if he, in uh, Titus 3, 5, and 6 here, and I just uh, put these, part of these, verses, these two verses together. Let's look at this, these words. Look at this. He saved us, this part of verse 5, and the last part of verse 5, beginning of verse 6. He saved us through the washing of regeneration and the renewing of the Holy Spirit, which, what did he do? He poured out in a little trickle that every once in a while, I'm just going to renew you. Is that what it says? No, it says I'm pouring it out on you abundantly. It's poured out abundantly to refresh you and to renew you. See, a lot of times we just go through our life and we can read the words on the page and and we say, oh, that's God. But then 
what I'm saying here is what his spirit wants to come in and he wants to refresh and he wants to renew you. He wants to bring new life into your soul. He wants to put a skip back in your step. And that's the kind of Holy Spirit that we serve. That's what he, how he wants to. He's here to pour. I, 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 man, I wish I would have had about 20 vases. That you know, I, just, I could take water and maybe a swimming pool and I just pour vases, just pour abundantly and more and lavishly and generously to just be poured. That is the nature of the Holy Spirit into our lives. Can we thank the Lord right now? That's, that's his heart. We think, okay, well, the Holy Spirit's just a part of my life. It's a part of my spiritual life. But I want, I'm trying to let you know the nature of the person of the Holy Spirit. He wants to renew us abundantly it says. Can I tell you what? This Holy Spirit can change an entire family from sin-driven, hardened, bitter, nasty, self-serving, addicted messes to glorious masterpieces of God's gentle grace. Oh, he can do that. He can do that. He can do that. I've seen him do it. Entire families. He gets a hold of one person. And then that person tells the next person what happened. And he gets a hold. And he can just take <coughs> the sin-hardened, bitter, nasty garbage of our lives. And he can just renew us. And it's more than words on a page. And he can change our lives. This renewing is a new beginning and a fresh start. These words, regeneration, washing, regeneration, and renewing the Holy Spirit, these words are very close in nature. In fact, if you look up the definition of regeneration, it says renewing. Uh, that's what it says. And, and this, it's a new beginning. It's a fresh start. And um, I, was, I, I was amazed at the stories that I have heard in the last couple of weeks, and you've probably heard them too, where uh, President Trump he uh, pardoned two individuals. One was uh, John, John Ponder. I, I want to say it's John Pardon. He got pardoned, but his name is John Ponder, okay? Uh, that's what it is. And he was a bank robber three times over. He, he'd robbed, and he was convicted uh, and, and sentenced to prison in 2009. Uh, you know, he was released in 2009, but he was sentenced to prison and, and, and served that time in Pennsylvania. And he was released in 2009, and since then, he, or, he, he's, a, he's a believer. He has a Christian organization that he started called Prisoners of Hope. And so because of his work, so he, he did his prison time. He was released from prison. He proved himself because, of, and he's, by his own words, by the salvation, Jesus got a hold of his life. The Holy Spirit got a hold of his life, renewed his life. And he started this organization called Prisoners of Hope. And because of his work, President Trump, in the last two weeks, pardoned him, completely exonerated him from everything. It's like every bank he robbed, every person he harmed, every bit of money he took, it was like it never happened. God pardoned him and gave him a fresh start because our president pardoned And how about the story of Alice Johnson? She got involved in a, a bad drug deal. She spent 22 years. I don't know why they put, and she had, so she was sentenced to life plus 25 years. That doesn't seem right for a bad drug deal. And she served 22 years. And in prison, she became an ordained minister in prison. The Lord got a hold of her life in prison and changed her heart, changed her mind. And President Trump, Trump pardoned her, and she's released from prison. And we saw the news in the last couple of years. I think it happened in 2018. And this week, she was given a full 100%. She looks like a beam of hope. She looks like a new woman because God gave her a fresh start. All that she served, it was gone. And she doesn't hold any bitterness. How many of you know that only God can do that through the Holy Spirit? She was renewed. She was renewed. So the idea of this renewing, this regeneration, is a, a new beginning. It is a fresh start. Maybe there's an area of your life that you need that today. I want you to tell you that the renewing of the Holy Spirit can do that for an area of your life right now. 
uh, as I talked at the beginning of the service, we are a resurrection people from, from graves to gardens. That's, that's the nature of what we believe, that God takes us and he resurrects us out of dead places. Is there any dead places in your life, your heart, your mind, your physical body, your spirit? Is there any dead places? I want to tell you, we serve a renewing power, the Holy Spirit, that wants to raise you out of that situation. Maybe it's, a, maybe it's a family member, a friend, or, or a mother, a father, a brother, sister, whatever, a neighbor, and you're going to begin to pray and say, we, we are the resurrection people. We serve the, the Holy Spirit that is here to renew and restore lives. That's who we serve. And we can all use this in various areas of our lives. Marriage, friendships, work, finances, faith. Tomorrow morning, some of you will return to your jobs. You'll walk in, the same building, the same machine, the same people, the same task, the same rut, but a new and refreshed you. Do you see that? We can all go to the same place, but the issue is he can renew you and make it a brand new place. The Holy Spirit is a renewing spirit. Next, the Holy Spirit is poured out on us abundantly. I talked about this a little bit. Let me just talk about three men in the Bible and be very brief about this. Three men in the Bible. And these were all believing, God-fearing individuals. Because what I, my point is here is not just that somebody, that their life is a mess. This renewing has to come to us who are believers. Let's just talk three people quick. Nicodemus. The first one. Nicodemus was a God-fearing man. Um, Peter is the other man, and, and Paul is the other man. All These all believed God, feared God, but they needed a renewing in their life. Nicodemus, he was a very religious man. Jesus has a conversation with him in John chapter 3. says, you've got to be born of the water and the spirit. And, and Nicodemus says to him, how can I be born a second time? I don't understand. I don't get it. Jesus said, you have to be born of the spirit. When that happened to Nicodemus, a very religious man, he understood or began to understand a relationship with God. And it says that, that Jesus said the wind blows where it will and you can't tell where it comes from, where it goes. But the interaction with Nicodemus was so precious that do you know that at, at Jesus' burial, that it was Joseph of Arimathea that went and prepared Jesus' body, but do you know who was with him? It was Nicodemus, if you read in John chapter 20. Something so profound in Nicodemus who believed in God, the renewing spirit of God touched Nicodemus' life into a relationship that it touched Nicodemus in such a precious way that he became a precious follower of Jesus. And, and I, want, I want to tell you right now what I'm talking about. The Holy Spirit, it's not big bombastic ways that he touched. He just comes in and he just moves in your heart silently and you know it's the Holy Spirit. You know it in your life, in your circumstances. He just came in and he renewed you. He refreshed you and made things new. Peter, huh, here's a disciple. He's a follower of Jesus. But he was a denier. Ooh. You ever go to work and somebody asks you about church on Sunday or they ask you and you have that fight? I don't know if I should bring up Jesus. I don't know if, I, if, it's, a, if it's kosher to say something about God. The truth is, sometimes we're no different than Peter. Remember, he goes to those three individuals, and, they're, and, they're at, and he, he denied Jesus three times. Can I tell you what? People today in our culture are saying whatever they want. We don't need to hold anything back that we're followers of Jesus. It doesn't matter where in our neighborhood. Or, or we just have to use wisdom how we say and what we say. But we don't need to hold back. Let's not be like Peter. And, and so what happened with Peter? He comes to to Pentecost, the outpouring comes, and he was a new man. He wasn't a denier anymore because the Lord touched his life there at the outpouring at Pentecost, and, uh, and, uh, and he touched his life. Paul, on the road to Damascus, his life is touched. The outpouring of the Holy Spirit comes on his life, and, and he becomes, Paul literally becomes, he was a religious man, a believing, he believed in God, but he became a new man. So Nicodemus, Paul, Peter, they were all God-fearing, all believed in God, but they needed the renewing of the Holy Spirit. Do you? In your life? 
We all do in our lives. I need it. Not just you. I need it as well in my life. Let me add just a couple points here. Uh, This renewing comes with a fresh awareness that the Holy Spirit will always stay with us. The the Holy Spirit is God, the third person of the Trinity. So the following realities apply. In Matthew 28, 19, 20, Jesus said these words. He says, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe everything I commanded you. And then he says these words, and lo, I am with you always. Jesus says that. Of the Father, God, in Hebrews 13, 5, it says, for he himself said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Aren't you glad about that? He's with us today. The Holy Spirit's here with us today. And then Jesus says of the Holy Spirit in John 14, 16, and 17, I'll pray the Father and he will give you another helper that he may abide with you forever. That he'll abide with you. He'll dwell with you forever as some of the translations you might be looking at. He's he's the one that dwells with you. He dwells with you and will be in you. How many of you are glad that God the Father, Jesus, the Holy Spirit are there to be with us, to renew us. They've not abandoned us. We're not forsaken. We're not alone. How many Satan comes and he says, you're all by yourself. You have no help. You, you, he said, he just, these accusations that come from Satan. But I want you to know the Holy Spirit's with you to renew you. He's not left you. He's not going anywhere. And lastly this morning. This renewing recognizes the presence of the Lord in our lives and our church. This renewing of the Holy Spirit, this renewing of the outpouring of the Spirit, it recognizes the presence of the Lord in our lives. Have you ever been driving your car? And you could be listening to Christian radio or or you can be doing something and and, uh, and all of a sudden there's just tears just come to your eyes. There's just that you just sense a presence of the Lord. Maybe you're in your home or you're somewhere and, and you're just by yourself. And it's just like there's a presence. Of, it was a scripture that's renewed to your heart and mind. And it's just the presence of the Lord comes over your life. And you just don't know how to respond other than tears or smile with joy. The presence of the Lord is so prevalent. This comforting and peaceful presence that is there. Pastor Chris is going to come and we're going to just sing a song in closing that, that just touched my life, and I think it's going to touch our life as we close this morning. But I want to tell you what. In your life, you need to foster this atmosphere of his presence in your life, an atmosphere of refreshing, an atmosphere of this renewing of the Spirit of God in our lives. Can I just tell you what? Every Sunday that we come together, can we just anticipate that he's going to come, he's going to refresh us, he's going to renew us, those that come through these doors with heavy burdens, you're weighed down with stuff in your heart and life. How many of you know that this pastor, just with words, can't do a thing? I can't do a thing. This building can't do a thing for you. But I want to tell you, his Holy Spirit can renew you by his presence and refresh you. And I pray as you go out this room this morning, that's going to happen in your life. This idea of renewing means you're new again and again and again and again. New again. Let's stand together. Not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but according to his mercy, he saved us through the washing of regeneration and the renewing of the Holy Spirit, which he poured out on us abundantly through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Lord willing, next Sunday, I know it's Labor Day weekend, and I'm gonna speak on verse seven about becoming heirs through grace and the wonderful grace of our Lord that we desperately need. This song, maybe I heard it on the radio once, It rocked my world on Friday morning. I texted Chris, and I said, Chris, we need to sing this this morning. And I told him, I said, you put it in the service wherever you want to put it. He chose now. But I want to just, I want to just, if if you're in this room right now and you just need the presence of the Lord to just renew some circumstance, some situation in your life right now, as we sing, as we worship, as we lift our voices, Just allow his Holy Spirit to move in your heart and life and bring renewal that you desperately need. Father, I thank you for these precious people. They love you and you love them. 
I thank you that we're not stuck. That you send your Holy Spirit to renew us again and again and refresh us again and again. And Lord, I pray that as I've spoken these words as we've worshiped this morning, that I pray when people get into their car and they turn that key, there would be something in their spirit that would be enlightened, it would be fresh. There'd be new hope. That Lord, you're gonna be with them the rest of this day. You're gonna be rest with them tomorrow morning when they start their work day. You're gonna bless their family. You're gonna bless their friendships. You're going to bless the work of their hands. You're going to bless their hobbies. That, God, you're going to allow them to enjoy. They're not going to dread. They're not going to be discouraged. They're not going to be disappointed. But, God, they're going to walk in refreshing and renewing because of what you do in our lives. We give you the praise and we give you the glory. Let's sing this together. Can't go back to the Can't control what tomorrow will bring, but I know here in the middle is the place where you promise to be. not enough unless you come will you meet me here again cause all I want is all you As I walk now through the valley, let your love rise above every fear. Like the sun shaping the shadow in my weakness, your glory. Not enough unless you come. Will you meet me here again? Cause all I want is all you Not enough unless you come. Will you meet me here again? You are all I want. Is all I want is all you. Not for a minute 
was I forsaken? The Lord is in this place. The Lord is in this place. Oh, come, Holy Spirit, dry bones awaken. The Lord is in this place. The Lord is in this place. Is all I want is all you are. Will you meet me here again? I will worship you. Let's just worship the Lord for a moment before we go. Just lift your voices right now. Just let the, let the fruit of your lips bring praise to the Lord right now. Maybe you're not used to doing this, but just praise Him with your lips right now. Just recognize that He's here in this place right now. He's renewing and He's, work, he's working in your life. Hallelujah. Father, we thank You, God. We thank You, God, that You're here in this place and that You're working in all of our lives, God. We utter Your praise. Glory be to Your name, O oh God. We worship your name. We worship you, Lord. Hallelujah. We praise your name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Mm. Well, is anybody encouraged today? Anybody encouraged? I pray you go this week and just walk in that renewing. You come back next Sunday morning, and the Lord's going to meet us here again in a beautiful way. Lord bless you. Have